We are counting down the hours until Bloomsday. One perennial runner says his leg may be broken, but his spirit is still very much intact. And if you're gearing up for the big race, there are some things you need to know. We'll run down our list for you this morning. Riverfront Park will be a busy place today. We look ahead to the official return of a popular landmark. Five a.m. on our Friday morning. Welcome to Creme 2 Morning News. I'm Jen York and I'm Brittany Bailey. We want to begin this Friday morning with a check of our weather forecast. That's the all important topic of discussion, mm -hmm. right? We're heading into the weekend. Lots of events coming up, even starting today where we might want to get outside and get out and about. So we will send things over to Evan Irani in the Weather Center this morning for more on that. Good morning, Brittany and Jen. Yeah, we do start off our day with uh, pretty pleasant conditions outside. We've seen uh, some struggle as far as the wind goes. That's always kind of been uh, on the radar for the last few days and it will continue to be over the weekend. But take a look at the 12 hour forecast for your Friday 65 degrees for that afternoon high with partly cloudy skies along the way. Your weekend forecast looks like this. We've got warm temperatures on the way Saturday and Sunday, both seeing the first days of 2019 with 70 degree temperatures coming around. Partly cloudy skies on your Saturday and into your Sunday. The thing is, by Sunday evening, we do have a cold front that's going to push through. What that cold front is going to do on Sunday evening is bring up our wind speeds a bit and bring the possibility of some showers to us. But that holds off till Sunday evening. That's why I don't really think it's going to be a problem at all for your Bloomsday. Here's what we see on Future Tracker when we run it forward for you through 8.30 p.m. on Saturday. You see those showers developing. By the time we get to Sunday morning, they are still holding off over western Montana and pushing into north Idaho. That's why you don't really see them pop up around that northeast corner of Washington and around north Idaho up until Sunday afternoon and evening. And even then, they don't really look to be pushing into Spokane all that much. Outside right now, pretty calm start to the day. We've got the sun rising in just a few minutes. Temperatures mainly in the upper 30s and low 40s. The clock is at 501 right now. Cody Crawford now going to get us a check of traffic. Morning. As a reminder, food truck Friday start today in Spokane and there's a road closure you need to know about. Wall Street will be closed from Main Avenue to Spokane Falls Boulevard from 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. for the food trucks. So if you normally take this route in the mornings, you'll need to, you'll need to find a new way around the area. That is the only update I have, but I'll be back in 30 minutes with more. Brittany and Jen, back to you. Cody, thank you. 502 now. Well, we are just two days away from Bloom's Day, and one perennial runner goes through a lot to compete every single year. So you can only imagine his disappointment when he broke his leg shortly after registration this year. But he does not plan on breaking his streak. As Kremtu's Kira L. Fallen tells us, he has about one dozen people who are ready to make sure he finishes his 43rd Blooms Day. Good morning, Kiera. Yes, good morning. For perennial Blooms Day participants, this event really does mean a lot to them. An example, Pete Thompson tells me that he even missed his youngest daughter's uh, baptism back in the day to make sure that he could make it to Bloom's Day. So his leg may be broken this year, but his spirit is very much intact. Bloom's Day has been a part of Spokane and Pete Thompson has been a part of Bloom's Day since 1977. At 75 years old, Thompson has had many great memories from an event that has grown along with him. But when he broke his leg in February, he thought it was over until one of his doctors convinced him it was not offering to push him herself. From there, the quest to find a wheelchair began and Thompson may have just found the perfect one. This chair belongs to a man named Walt Maid, Mabe, a Marine who lost his lower right leg fighting for our country years ago in Vietnam. Thompson says he is going to finish this 43rd Blooms Day for him and a team of 12 people who will be pushing him to the end. I am going to try to make him proud by uh, using it and acknowledging his his service to our country, number one, and number two, his generosity. I feel grateful and, uh, you know, it's so generous of them, time and, and effort. It's a feel-good thing. I'm never going to be able to be a perennial because I'm missing that one. And so I help preserve that. To me, that's important. David Kirkman, a good friend of Pete's who will help push Thompson this year, has participated in every Blooms Day except one, the very first one. He, along with members from Thompson's family and other friends, will be with Thompson every step of the way on Sunday. Now, Thompson says that it is sad to see, but perennial numbers, they do decrease every year. Luckily, he will be making it. He won't be one of those who just couldn't make it. He plans on making it to number 50 for Blooms Day here, and hopefully Blooms Day is after that as well. I'll send it back to you. 
All right, Kira, thank you so much for sharing that story. And it's just very inspiring oh, for is. everyone out there to th this morning. I mean, you couldn't not let him do it this year. Absolutely. You couldn't miss it. Yeah, and I love that his doctor was like, well, I'll, I'll do it. it. <laughs> yeah, love that story. Kira, thank you. Coming up on 505 now, while well, most of the elite athletes are already in town ahead of Bloomsday. One of them is a Paralympian and four time Bloomsday champ. He also grew up about an hour away from Spokane in Tico. You know, I was there and I at Bloomsday saw adult wheelchair racers and it's just it's led to me into the life that I have. And so um, to be that role is huge. And I just want to, you know, just tell everybody that they can do what they want to do and show them is what I love to do myself. So it's um, it's a great feeling. Susanna Scaroni was has won the women's elite wheelchair division at Bloomsday four times before. Bloomsday is her hometown course and she's done it 14 times. Right now she is studying for her master's degree at the University of Illinois. Well, Alice, we look forward to Sunday. There are some steps that you can take to get ready for the big race. If you want to grab some gear beforehand, you can stop by the Bloomsday trade show today and tomorrow. It's all happening at the Spokane Convention Center. The times for each day are listed on your screen. There is also that is also where runners can check in for the race. If you want to register for the race, it's not too late. You can do that at the trade show. The late entry fee is $40. Well, even if you are not competing, you may be affected by some road closures. Streets near the start and finish line, along with the Monroe Street Bridge, will close at 5 o'clock the morning of the race. The roads are set to reopen at 2 p.m. Now, if you are planning to drive in or around downtown, Ash, Maple, Division, Brown, and Hamilton streets will still be available all day long. Well, and here's what you need to know about getting to the race. Parking is available at the Spokane Arena for $7. There also are dozens of lots in downtown Spokane. You can also catch the bus. STA will have a Bloomsday Express shuttle. Uh, those are based all around town. Those cost about $2 each way. Children ages 5 and younger can ride for free. Well, finally, leave your backpacks at home. As a new policy this year, backpacks or other solid fabric bags are not allowed at the race. However, you can bring clear plastic bags and clear string bags. Fanny packs also will be allowed for essentials. And if you're going to be at the big event on Sunday, we would love to see your photos. Use the hashtag Bloomsday Run to share them with us and you might just see them on air. I spot me up there on the top <laughs> left. Well, we also will have our Sky 2 drone up in the air during the race to get you the best angles. This is footage of last year's race. You can see some of this year's footage during the race on Sunday on our Creme 2 Facebook page. And for more information on all things Bloom Day, Bloom's Day, rather, you can head to our website at creme.com. Acting in my capacity as President of the United States, it is my high honor and privilege to declare Expo 74 officially open to all the citizens of the world. Well, you may remember that speech if you were in Spokane back in the 70s. That was the opening speech for Expo 74. A piece of history from that era is making an official return this morning to Spokane. You might remember large butterflies were placed at the entrances of the park. They were not intended to be permanent fixtures, fixtures rather, but they ended up becoming iconic remnants of the expo. Well, now one of those butterflies is back to its old glory. It stands at 50 feet high with wings that extend to about 60 feet. Those wings are actually now covered with lilac fabric. Leaders with the Spokane Parks and Recreation Department, there we see it happening, say that the structure is designed to handle winds up to 110 miles per hour. Boy, when you see them working on that, it gives you an idea of how big, big that butterfly yeah. is. Well, the official ribbon cutting for the butterfly and the North Promenade happens today. The North Promenade is a new gateway to the park. It will feature a route for both pedestrians and bicyclists. The ceremony is coming up at 10 o'clock this morning. Well, leaders with the city of Spokane are exploring ways to revitalize downtown alleyways, and today they're asking for your help. It's part of the city's innovation alleyways project. Starting today at 3 p.m., city leaders want to hear your input on how to improve the alleyways. City leaders want to transform them into more functional spaces. 
The project is specifically focused on Railroad Alley and Steam Plant Alley. Now they run parallel to the railroad viaduct. The open house is happening on the first floor of River Park Square. It is free and open to everyone. You have until 8 o'clock tonight to give your input. Well, they asked and you responded. Idaho's annual day of giving shattered records yesterday. Donations surpassed the fundraising goal of $1.7 million. Well, hundreds of nonprofits took part in Idaho Gives. It is an annual event to donate to your favorite Idaho charity. This year's goal was met just after 10 last night. The total money raised came out to be more than $1.9 million, with nearly 12,000 donors involved. Donations were accepted until midnight on the Idaho Gives website. Great job, everyone. I mean, a lot more than the goal, and that goal yeah. was increased this year over last year, so right. great to see. 510 now on this Friday. Astronauts aboard the International Space Station have to wait at least one more day to see the newest cargo launch. It was just canceled because of a last minute issue. A new CDC report is showing the dangers of electronic scooters. We will break down the numbers. And we are starting off a beautiful weekend ahead, but we do have a cold front that'll move through Sunday night. Find out what that entails as we head towards your Bloomsday coming up in just a bit.